Chibuchu. All right, welcome everybody to the year of Ubuntu. This is our leader summit. We have been waiting all year for uh, this moment. Uh, what an exciting uh, time to be alive. Uh, but we also recognize that we are still in a global pandemic and there's still you know, a lot of other challenges going on around the world that we wanna be able to hold a space uh, for those that can't be here today and uh, for all of those that um, you know, may uh, need some Ubuntu uh, being shared out to them as, as a form of energy. Um, so just take a, a quick moment uh, just to, uh, to honor uh, this space and to honor um, the world. You can take a deep breath in. You can breathe out. And really, uh, my uh, breathing exercise I do is I really let the carbon dioxide out as I'm letting so many other bad things that I don't want in me out. So one more deep breath is an invitation. Breathe out. All right. Um, so... Welcome, welcome. This is uh, such a fantastic uh, day. Um, it's a morning for me here. I'm in Southern California. My name is Dr. Molly Matziva, uh, and I'm going to be co-hosting this event, um, as always, uh, with the lovely uh, Chenesai Mangoma, who is based in Zimbabwe. Uh, it's our remarkable Violeta book, uh, The Honorable, um, in, uh, uh, in Slovenia. Uh, we also have another co-host joining us today, Sonia Klopik, also in Slovenia. Uh, it's going to be a pretty uh, remarkable day today, uh, just uh, being able to discuss uh, the how, the what, uh, and the why, right, um, as to how we lead in the world, because there is a leader in every uh, one of us. Um, we are uh, often uh, re referencing a book called uh, Everyday Ubuntu, um, that, uh, you know, Paul, if you don't mind just sharing that link or uh, the book, the name of the book uh, in the author right here in our chat. So for those that don't know, I've shared this a number of times, so I think uh, we're all aware, uh, really talking a lot about Ubuntu in our everyday lives, recognizing that in each of us, we find some leaders. Um, so I will begin really just by introducing myself briefly, then uh, we can, uh, you know, bring it to our co-hosts to also introduce themselves before we are uh, turning it over to um uh to our speakers that are joining us today uh, uh and we're really honored uh, that they can be here with us today um uh, after that we will go into some breakout sessions we always feel uh that it is so important to take time in smaller groups to really have a conversation um and uh, from there we have some reflections and as always a call to action what is it that we can do given that we spend a uh, wonderful 90 minutes together uh to continue this work in the world and then we'll adjourn um so uh I am um, actually working as a director of clinical affairs uh, at Viz AI, which is a company uh, that produces uh, and develops uh, artificial intelligence software uh, as medical devices. And uh, I am a trained engineer. I went to Drexel University for my first uh, uh, degree and uh, also went to Momot University for grad school. And then I got my PhD in sustainability. I departed a little bit from engineering, but I recognized that there was so much more that was needed uh, because we can develop all we want but if we're not thinking about how we can sustain ourselves sustain the world that uh, uh, future generations will inherit uh, then maybe my part is not done I'm a big believer in working on purpose and therefore you hear this uh, weaving through the conversations here that we are not just talking about uh, Ubuntu we are about being Ubuntu uh, so welcome to everyone there's a reason why you're here today and this conversation in this moment would not be exactly what it is if you were not here so uh, uh, Tatenda, as we say in my language, just for being here uh, today. Um, may we um, then uh, introduce uh, the rest of our my co-hosts, uh, and I'm going to start uh, with uh, Violeta. Go ahead. Thank you very much, Molly, and greetings from my side as well. Um, I cannot even express how thrilled I am to see what a development we have done in the last year since we started with the year of Ubuntu. And as all other good things, it happened sporadically. Um, 
it was a spear of the moment when I met these great uh, leaders from uh, Africa, Cheney and Molly, and the idea just started to mature. And uh, it's really amazing to, to learn so much from you and to being, being able to integrate all these wisdoms of uh, Ubuntu into everyday life. I think through the core message of Ubuntu, the rest of the world can really reconnect with the old energies of our own lands, uh, keeping in our hearts that I am because you are uh, it's really an ancient message of uh, the old ways. And that is bringing forward many other deep, uh, deeply rooted in our genetic memory messages from our old elders. So uh, I'm very grateful to be part of this movement. I'm very grateful to meet all of you and constantly get inspired and to learn from the source what the Ubuntu is all about. So can't wait. How, what the, today's day will bring. Back to you, Molly. Thank you, Violetta. And I must say, Violetta is a leader in her own right, you know, uh, truly very humble. And, uh, you know, in her leadership role in Slovenia, uh, there's so much that we can learn what it means to be a leader, right? Uh, so thank you, and we look forward to uh, sharing some more. Um, might I uh, have Sonia go, please? Thank you, Molly. I have to tell you that I, since I first heard for the Ubuntu philosophy, I embraced it and I felt in love, I can say. So uh, Ubuntu is part of my new platform for leadership, for sustainable tomorrow and for our brighter future. And I'm really looking forward to co-create today's leadership summit and i'm grateful to all of you ladies who uh, managed to uh, really inspire with this initiative the year of ubuntu all of us to remember what is needed and more what is possible for us humans Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you, Sonia. Um, I really appreciate that. And, you know, for us as uh, Africans that are actually on this call, being able to recognize that, um, you know, some of the wisdoms, you know, uh, that have come from the places where we come from, uh, no matter where you are in the world, you're constantly knowing in your intuition that you are following a, a certain wisdom from how you were raised. What an honor to be able to learn that we are inspiring the world and continuing to bring those old ways back to uh, reconnect and to rejuvenate what, this, uh, what a better world might be in the future. Um, I'll open it up to Chene and uh, from your introduction, you can also um, uh, speak a little bit more about uh, the inspiration for Year of Ubuntu. Hello everyone, I am super excited, a bit nervous to be here to see all of you uh, leaders in all your rights. Thank you so much for joining us. I know Sunday is very precious, um, time with family, but to take time to spend with us is equally very special. Mine is really a journey of being present. I started this journey with great mentors such as uh, my dear sister Molly and many others who have really kind of guided me to being present for my purpose. Um, having studied law and being a trade lawyer and figuring out what is the gap, what is the gap between trade and sustainable development and really figuring out that we don't know enough about community practices that has really drove me into working on the ground, working with the people and I am so in love with that purpose and hoping to synergize that purpose with conversations we have at very high level um, meetings. So it's been just a journey of being present and really showing up and, and, and serving my, playing my role in this world. And every day I learn, and I think I go by, if, every, if anyone follows me, I would just say, learn to learn. Every day for me is a learning experience. And I'm looking forward to this conversation because I know I'm going to walk away with so much richness and so much pearls and germs for the rest of, the, um, of my week and perhaps for following years. Um, that's about me, a bit about me. Uh, a bit about what inspired the year of Ubuntu. I, I really just believe it was three hearts that have sustainability at their core coming together and really trying to reimagine, redesign and rethink 
what is it that we can possibly do if we collectively come together, but not just come together in sameness, but come together to celebrate our differences and see how all these contributions in a collective can help to heal the world. We were really taken aback by what happened with COVID-19, all in our different spaces, Mali in the US, um, Violetta in Slovenia, and I in Zimbabwe. And we really just thought, what can we do? Or what can we start to rebirth or remember, rediscover that can help the world heal? So we came with this philosophy of Ubuntu as Molly has carried it through uh, with the Macheka Sustainability Project. She calls it the Hunu Heart, right? How can we remember this concept, this principle, this philosophy? What can we unpack about Ubuntu that can help people in medicine, people in engineering, people in law, kind of come together and reimagine the future of the work they do and how they can serve the world better. We didn't imagine at the point that we came together that we had answers. What we did know is we had a passion to bring people together and reimagine, rethink, redesign. Here we are with the Leadership Summit. Over the course of the year, we have had uh, we have brought uh, teachers onto the table to discuss how Ubuntu philosophy inspires the work they do and what role does it have in the world post COVID. We have brought medical doctors to the table to discuss the same philosophy um, as well as healthcare practitioners. How does that actually help you in practice if you understand the Ubuntu philosophy? Remember ours is a search to kind of bring these answers to the table to kind of bring these questions to the table and to forge a new way to be, if at all we need a new way to be. And this is what has led to this leadership summit. Um, so it's really amazing and onerous that we can be joined by such an amazing panel of speakers, but above and beyond that, that we've been able to take time from within our own work in our own spaces to reflect deeply about the work that we can do in the world and how we can better present ourselves in the world. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, without further delay, I'm going to hand over to the amazing Dr. Mali um, to go ahead and introduce our speakers. Thank you very much for that. Um, so I uh, am going to share my screen and uh, we'll just uh, introduce our speakers. I hope you can see this. Uh, so we have uh, Dr. Cindy Zemura, who um, is uh, in flight. Uh, your flight was delayed, so unfortunately she won't be able to join. She did share some words that uh, Chenisai will be able to share a little later. Um, we also have Farai Madziva, um, who is a VP at uh, Curio Wellness, and uh, he's going to share his story and uh, tell us a little bit uh, more about himself. As you can see, we share a name. Uh, he's actually uh, my brother. And uh, we are, you know, 10 months uh, apart, he's 10 months older than me. And so for two months out of the year, we're actually twins. Um, a, a, a dear and a first friend, I, I would say, in the world for me. Uh, we also have Dr. David uh, Kaulem, uh, who is uh, the uh, Dean of uh, the School of Education uh, and Leadership at AJU. We do have a message from Dr. Uh, Thomas Legrand, uh, who is the author of Politics of Being. Um, Chen, if you, um, or maybe Koli, you can also share the link of the YouTube video uh, in the chat there for folks uh, uh, that may be interested in that. So um, before we move on to Farai and uh, David, um, we will actually uh, just have the video first from uh, Thomas. So um, I hope you can uh, hear this once I start playing. All right. Hello, everyone. Thanks for inviting me to this uh, Ubuntu Leaders Summit. I'm Thomas Legrand. I'm a wisdom seeker, a social scientist, and a sustainability professional. And I think our future crucially depends on our ability to undergo in the coming decades a deep cultural evolution, which I believe is in a sense spiritual. It has to do with rediscovering our true reason for being here on earth. She's, I believe, to become who we are, the best version of ourselves. 
I explain this in my upcoming book, Politics of Being, Wisdom and Science for a New Development Paradigm. Uh, the book explains the, the rational, it presents an integrative framework and propose public policy agendas in many sectors to, um, for making being instead of having our main collective goal. So the book will be available uh, early December in platform, on platforms such as Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Apple Books, etc. And you can, uh, for more information, you can follow my website, politicsofbeing.com, or through social media such as LinkedIn, Facebook, or Instagram. So I'm talking to you right now from the southwest of France, uh, where I live, next to Plum Village, the monastery of Zen master Thich Nhat Hanh, who first coined the word interbeing. I am because you are is a famous saying uh, of Ubuntu, and it embodies perfectly the definition of interbeing as um, defined by Zen master Thich Nhat Hanh from a Buddhist perspective. So, um, as I was reading uh, this book, um, I was asking, you know, what is a wisdom-based approach to politics and development? And I review, uh, you know, the traditional wisdoms of many nations. And I was surprised to find out that uh, it is often like for Ubuntu captured in a word uh, that express uh, this uh, interbeing paradigm in their own world, in their own words. So uh, indeed, we are all made of relationships and we can only flourish in relationships, in relationships with ourselves, one another, and nature. So uh, with the politics of being, I propose a universal framework uh, that every nation should adapt in accordance to its own wisdom. Every nation is to define its own path to the politics of being, its own version of the good life. So I wish uh, this summit to be a useful and joyful step towards reconnection, uh, reconnection with this important African wisdom of Ubuntu. So I look forward to connecting with you more and send you much love. Thank you. All right. And that was uh, Thomas. And then we can uh, move on to um, David. Are you on? I, yes, I, I. That's wonderful. There you are. Yes, I, <laughs> I'm on. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. I must apologize. I seem to see some, uh, you know, um, disconnections on my uh, network. So I'm, I'm hoping that uh, it won't disturb my, uh, <laughs> yeah. But anyway, I'm really, really honored to be invited to this network uh, and to participate in reflecting around Ubuntu and around uh, leadership. These are things that I think are very important in the development, in the relationship, and also in the hopes that human beings have. So my name is David Kaulem. I'm presently the Dean of uh, uh, the School of Education and Leadership at Arupe Jesuit University. Um, I was trained as a philosopher, uh, focusing on ethics. And as a philosopher, I, you know, I really am sort of ambivalent about the concept of Ubuntu, particularly um, the way in which it has been used politically, um, it can restrict human beings. It can, um, it has been used to divide people. And so we really have to be careful about what we mean by Ubuntu. And my work has been trying to correct those interpretations of Ubuntu which divide people. Um, and I think that um, Ubuntu is about relearning to be human because I think a lot of uh, human activities can push us away from being human. 
you take economic activity, uh, we can get into it in such a way that it becomes more important than being human and being connected with others. Economics can divide people. It can create classes. It can you know, um, create enmities and competitions. We have seen world wars coming out of economic competitions. Um, I also know that other activities like science, you know, they are wonderful, but when we divide them, when we disengage them from what it means to be human, uh, scientific developments can be a threat to human flourishing. So um, I'm really particularly um, um, excited to be part of this because I think this is where we can engage ourselves and begin to reflect on what does it mean to be human so that we have our, you know, our focus on being human. Whatever other activities we engage with should serve what it means to be human. I thank you. Thank you very much, David. Uh, you know, I've been seeing in the uh, chat here that, uh, you know, as you were talking, uh, we are really reflecting and recognizing, yes, this is a call to action, a call to uh, relearning how to be human. Uh, that's a pretty powerful, a tweetable moment. Uh, we'll come back um, uh, to you again to really talk a little bit more about your experience uh, in education and uh, teaching others for, um, uh, for leadership when it comes to Ubuntu. Uh, but for now, I would like to, uh, you know, invite uh, Farai uh, to please uh, introduce yourself, uh, tell us what you do, and a little bit of your personal journey to leadership. All right, thank you very much, Molly. Um, I'm very honored as well uh, to obviously be here today. And um, be able to talk about Ubuntu in leadership. And it's something that I've really tried to think about in terms of how do I prepare for this uh, conversation that we're going to have today. And I thought there's really not a lot for me to prepare because this is about us talking about who we are in, in our everyday lives. And one thing that came to mind is a Bible verse uh, that says, love one another as you love yourself. And I said, that on its own defines what Ubuntu is. The minute you're able to actually love yourself and love your neighbor, then you're actually experiencing and practicing Ubuntu. Then I thought about it again and I said, well, in leadership, whatever I use, however I use Ubuntu, because at times you don't even talk about it, but it's something that you do naturally in your everyday life. I looked at Maslow's uh, hierarchy of needs. And on the third level and the fourth levels of the hierarchy of needs, there is a sense of belonging that you want to be able to create for each person, for them to be able to say they've actualized to that level. And the sense of belonging is when they feel that they are appreciated, when they feel that they're respected, when they feel that they are seen as people. And just on its own, I said, that level should have just been written Ubuntu because that's our everyday life, that's who we are. And then I looked at the core values of the different companies that I've worked with. They all come back to um, having very similar values that again relate to the word Ubuntu. You want to have companies that have, that have respect, diversity. You're talking about social awareness. You're talking about wanting each, your organization to lead by example. And I thought about all these things and I said, how have they been part of who I am today in, the, in how I lead, in how I work with people, in how I'm able to take my day through from the beginning to the end, because I walk in and I see people, I walk out and I'm seeing people. And that for me is what stems from the word Ubuntu, which is people, which is seeing other people as yourself. 
So just a little brief um, of myself. Um, I was born and raised in Zimbabwe. I grew up on a farm. So I've been a farmer since I was born. And I've continued to do farming. I went to the UK to study agriculture and land management. And I worked on a company that is in West Sussex. And what I remember about that place was majority of the people that I worked with were from were not really from England itself. We had people from Eastern Europe, we had people from Australia, and we had people from South Africa. And what was most intriguing about my group of team members from South Africa was they're all very young backpackers who, when they got to, uh, to the UK, they needed to make some money during the summertime so that they can continue on their journey traveling around the world. But what surprised them on the morning when they came to work was they found a young black Zimbabwean who was their, their manager to tell them this is what we're supposed to do for the day. I remember seeing the faces of my colleagues and a few speaking in different languages, trying to understand where we are in the UK and here we are finding a Zimbabwean now telling us this is what we're going to do for the day. I thought I was going to have a difficult time to manage the group, but then all I remembered was Ubuntu. If you respect people, you'll be able to find a path that you'll both be able to work together. And through our collaboration, getting them to understand what work we had to do, why we had to do the work, and why I was here, that I respected them, they would respect me. If that worked out, then we'll be fine. We actually created one of the best teams that the company ever had, we trebled our uh, productivity and we ended up having to go to other farms around the organization to train them and help them to develop teams on how to be able to do the work that we did as effectively and efficiently as we did and with the morale that the team had. But that was just for me, one of those areas where you can find yourself in a situation where you have people who actually look at you in the first instant they see you, they are very concerned. But Ubuntu says, when you see someone, he says, I see you, I respect you, I love you. And if you are able to carry that through your everyday life, that uh, you will not fail because I've, I've gone through that on several occasions. And I want to take you through to my next journey in my in my career. Um, I obviously then moved from the UK, I moved to Kenya, where I met people um, who were different from me in the sense that I did not speak the language that they spoke. Um, they were all relatively young people as well, and, but they had a, a stereotype of who their manager should be. And in the flower industry, most growers of flowers, roses, are white and they're Dutch. And so coming in was a bit of a question. He's not Dutch, he's not white. What is he going to teach us? What is he going to do? But again, back to the philosophy of Ubuntu. I see you, I respect you, let's do what we gotta do. And the more you practice that practice of Ubuntu, of allowing people to be people, allowing people to be human, respecting them for who they are, your results will always show. So I moved on and I want to tell you two more uh, incidences uh, of where I had to go through Ubuntu as a philosophy to underpin the values and my everyday life in terms of my leadership. I moved to Uganda. Uh, to work for a forestry company. And 
the biggest problem that we had that I was told you have to deal with was the supply of trees into our organization. And I said to one of my colleagues, um, what really is the problem that we have? And he told me that, well, the small scale farmers are not supplying us the poles. I said, where are they taking them? Or are they taking them to the competitors? I said, why don't you pay them more money? Or we've tried to pay them more money, but they're not bringing them in. So it wasn't about money. So I said, can you call the whole group and tell them we have a breakfast meeting at the pole plant, let's meet there. So the whole group came, must have had probably about 200 small scale growers uh, with their coming in to talk about plants. We had breakfast, bread, tea, the samosas, whatever we, 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 they, we knew that they would, they would have enjoyed eating. And so we shared the breakfast and then I talked to them and I said, I see you, I respect you all. Thank you for coming. Please supply us with poles. The next day, we had more poles than we had in the whole year. And the reason why that happened, and we still, I remember talk, being asked by uh, one of the leadership, how did you do it? I said, I respected them. I showed them that they're people. It was not about money. It was not about how much they have to be paid or when they have to be paid. They just wanted someone who was going to come and see them and talk to them and invite them to come and see what we do. And so, I mean, I, I have several of these stories that have led to success through just being able to see a person as a person. You can go back and talk about customer success. Customer success is all about people. Being able to see your consumers, you can have the quality that you want, you can have uh, the best product in the world, but you want to be able to give a product that you have actually shown your customers that you understand them, that you see them, that you respect them. And so throughout my career, I have worked through Ubuntu, using it as a value for me to be able to carry myself through even areas where you think it's going to be difficult. You're always working with people. People always take you through. People always help you to get through. People always be the ones who do your work. My mantra at this point in time in my current company is happy people, happy plants. That's uh, again, if I were to rewrite that, it's Ubuntu. Um, so I think that sort of just gives you an outline of why I think when we talk about leadership, you cannot diverge from talking about Ubuntu or giving it a name that is within your company core values which all of you, if you look at your company core values, there is Ubuntu in it. You just have not written it that way. But understanding why that is, it will help you to be able to excel and help, you, help your team members, help your leadership teams to be able to execute and excel in their leadership. Thank you. Wow, bravo. Thank you, Farai. I am filled with such deep pride, uh, all the key points uh, that uh, you shared there and the fact that you're such a good storyteller. You know, I was like, oh, tell us one more story, tell us one more story. Uh, so for those, on, you know, uh, who don't know Farai as well, he's actually in what we call the C-suite. You know, he's been an executive for quite some time, rose up the ranks, as you know, starting from when he was in the UK as a young manager, you know, who was already having to recognize that he needed to use uh, Ubuntu, but uh, all the way through to where he is today, talking about happy people, uh, happy plants, uh, happy people. Um, 
what's key about his role, and I think this is also similar to what I can uh, uh, share about David uh, in his story, is that it's not so much about spending a lot of time with other executives, right? So sometimes, you know, and for young people on the, on the, um, on the session here today, sometimes we may be thinking uh, leadership is really more about, you know, working well with those that are also uh, influential, right? But for the most part, you know, in uh, Farai's example, he, every day he's working with people that are, you know, planting, you know, in, in on the ground. Uh, so we may not always think about how are we actually interacting with the people that we are tasked to serve, but that we have the honor to actually be able to serve. David, I would say your story might be similar as well in education, right? So you have risen all the way to this very influential leadership role uh, at this university. Um, and yet every day you do interact with students, right? And a student is someone who is very impressionable and wondering what, what can the world offer me? And that honor of being able to bring about, you know, uh, an example of what uh, leadership is through Ubuntu is uh, something that we really want to bring into our breakout sessions so that we can, you know, explore that a little bit more about who am I, right? Who am I as a leader? Why do I actually want to engage uh, in utilizing Ubuntu? Um, I, I think I'll bring it back to David just uh, you know, uh, for a little bit here to speak a little bit more to this from your lived experience and how you've actually uh, you know, uh, gone up the ranks uh, in education. Um, why has it been so important for you to incorporate Ubuntu in who you are as an example for the work that you do in the world? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Molly. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> life is not uh, straight. It doesn't, you know, move in a straight uh, line, as it were. Um, but let me share uh, with you my background, which um, started raising questions about who I am, what I want to be in the world, and so on. So, um, my mother uh, came from Zambia um, and uh, came to Zimbabwe. My father was from Malawi uh, and then they met and I was born in Zimbabwe. So initially the experience of being in, you know, coming from potentially three different places causes a lot of anxiety, a lot of questions uh, people asking you who you are uh, all the time you introduce yourself. And, and so th that in a way started raising questions in my mind and it pushed me, you know, to cut the long story short, uh, it pushed me into reflecting about what does it mean to be in the world as it were. And so I became a philosopher and, and you know, uh, trying to understand these things, uh, reading about Plato, Aristotle, questions of identity, questions of, you know, uh, humanity and so on. So I began to appreciate the importance of ethics. In, in other words, um, what ought we to do? What ought we to be? as opposed to what we actually are. In other words, to raise questions about, it's not always that who you are is what you ought to be. <laughs> um, what you ought to be is the ideal, is that which inspires you to be bigger, to be wider, to be deeper, to be higher. And I think that all human beings thrive towards that. Uh, all human beings want to be better, want to associate with something bigger than themselves. And I, I thought yeah, as, as I was developing in that way as a philosopher, um, I thought that moral philosophy helps to raise these issues and I wanted to teach others about that. And that's why I became a teacher in, in ethics uh, at the University of Zimbabwe. And I spent uh, 13 years teaching uh, philosophy at the University of Zimbabwe and ended up being the chairperson of the Department of Religious Studies, Classics and Philosophy there. Um, I think that my background helped me to be able to deal with different people from different backgrounds. 
the fact that I knew what it meant to be questioned who you are made prepared me to be able to to engage with others who felt marginalized who felt you know challenged and and so i think it began to develop me as a leader uh, as it were uh, after that i you know then was invited to coordinate a regional program on catholic social teaching which which then gave a religious flavor to my ethics uh, as I organized a regional program for Eastern and Southern Africa uh, around issues of social justice, issues of um, poverty, uh, social political issues, uh, but from a, a faith perspective. So I did that for 11 years, uh, organizing meetings in South Africa, in Zimbabwe, in Kenya, in Uganda, you know, the whole region of Eastern and Southern Africa. And then after, after that, um, I felt that, you know, I needed to expand a little bit. Uh, so I joined, um, you know, a development organization, Porticus, which was based in Holland. I spent some three years in Holland uh, and discovered um, a lot of uh, work around um, development, but a lot of questions too. And that pushed me to go back to the classroom uh, because I felt that uh, there was a lot of work which needed to be done around uh, development, around uh, uh, humanity, and how humanity relates to itself and to the environment. So I uh, came back and uh, joined the uh, uh, Jesuit University in Harare. Uh, this is where I began uh, to teach. And they asked me, initially I was, I was Dean of Philosophy, philosophy. Uh, but because the institution is growing, they asked me uh, because of my background in, uh, in engaging with education, uh, they asked me to be Dean of uh, Education and Leadership. So what we are doing now uh, in Education and Leadership is to expand a program which used to be called Training for Transformation. This is a program which is inspired by uh, Paulo Freire, um, a Brazilian education philosopher who in many ways changed our understanding of education. Uh, he, 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 he developed a way of doing education which respects um, learners, which says learners must be in charge of their own education. Um, and by learners, he didn't mean pe you know, people who went to school. He meant all human beings are learners that teachers are only facilitators for education. Uh, that, we, you know, um, he, he was against what he called banking type of education, where the teacher is imagined to be someone with information, with knowledge, which is in a bucket, and that the uh, student is, uh, you know, comes to the classroom empty. And so the teacher pours all the education into uh, the student. Um, and, and so Paulo Freire was very much against this. And I think that a lot of Africans also, from the point of view of Ubuntu, the idea is no one knows nothing. All of us uh, know something. Ubuntu is about how do we share what we know so that we become better as individuals, but uh, together as well. So that's what we are doing now with the uh, BA Honours degree in transformational leadership at Arupe Jesuit University. We are inviting uh, people in different institutions, in different organizations who want to further their understanding of leadership but leadership, which is very much uh, centered around recognizing the humanity of all uh, and also bringing humanity to our technical you know, relationships, to our technical knowledges of science, of uh, 
psychology of whatever it is that we study business, but how do you bring in humanity in those, um, in those um, areas of uh, human activity? So that's what we are doing. Uh, the, the program is a, uh, if, you, if you have some background in teaching or some background in uh, other professions, you can get into the program as a two-year program. But um, uh, if you don't have, uh, if you're coming st straight from school, then you, you, uh, it's a four-year program. We think that this program is going to cultivate um, uh, leaders of a certain quality, of a certain uh, quality of mind that can stimulate transformation, not just transformation in the world, but also transformation of human persons uh, so that we le learn and relearn to, to be human, to be Ubuntu. By Ubuntu, it doesn't mean just being African. It means to be a human being who can be comfortable with anybody in the world. Uh, that's what I can say with regard to my personal journey, but also my professional uh, development so far. Thank you. Wow, bravo. Thank you, David. Really appreciate you taking the time for that. I can see there have been a lot of uh, you know, comments uh, there in the chat. Uh, if anyone has questions, I know that we also have others that are listening in either on Facebook or LinkedIn. Uh, do send them to us uh, and we can try and uh, address them uh, you know, as the conversation happens here. Don't uh, hesitate to uh, ask a question. Uh, Chene, do you think you can summarize a little bit of what uh, Dr. Cindy might have wanted to share? I know she couldn't make it today because she's in flight, but just uh, you know, some brief words uh, from her, please. Absolutely. Um, before I go into Dr. Cindy's message, I just want to say thank you, Dr. David Cullum. Uh, David is actually my uncle. So in, I say uncle, but in Shana tradition, he is my father's sister's husband. Um, and we've had many of these conversations over dinner. And importantly, he is part of the reason why I started investigating these philosophies and always questioning me, what is it? What are you doing? Why are you doing? When you're ready, you'll come to me. So thank you, Dr. David Cullen. There is so much uh, profound words from you, but um, I fondly listened and recalled many dinner dates over it. Um, if I may go into Dr. Cindy. Dr. Cindy is flying to the Middle, uh, Middle East and she got delayed, her flight got delayed. And um, I want to read briefly what she has said here. And she really apologizes for not joining us. Um, I, she says here, I'm sorry I could not join you as I had intended due to travel constraints beyond my control. It's my humble pleasure to have been invited to be part of this prestigious online gathering with you all. In my absence, I would like to share with you some words of encouragement from the Honorable President Cyril Ramaphosa at a le leadership meeting at the UNGA in 2018. He asked, what is your purpose and calling in life, young lady? I said, to serve humanity. He answered and said, in order to know your calling and to lead, you have to lose yourself in the service of others. In order to find yourself, then you'll be a great leader. I hope these words encourage you today and beyond. Ubuntu and leadership is none other than Humility, sincerity, empathy, sympathy, compassion, love, respect, commitment, and passion. Let us not give up on that. Thank you and may you stay safe and keep well. Thank you so much guys. And we really wished uh, Cindy would join us, but these are really such a great and profound message. Over to yeah. you, Dr. Paul. Yeah, thank, thank you. And as I was listening to uh, uh, that uh, short statement, I, I was weaving in exactly what Farai was talking about, you know, regarding love and empathy. I was weaving in uh, what David has just really been uh, telling us about, you know, uh, uh, going the long way then, the connection to humanity. So when it comes to leadership, what we're truly learning here, leaning into, uh, is recognizing that 
when we leave people behind, when we leave ourselves behind out of the equation, then we are actually not showing up in our true leadership. Uh, there is a difference between leadership and management, and hopefully we can talk a little bit um, about, uh, you know, who we are as leaders, who we are aspiring uh, to be leaders. Um, you know, if you have any questions, particularly for some of our young uh, you know, leaders that are aspiring to rise up the ranks in, you know, whatever company and industry you're working in, uh, this is your time. You know, we have, um, you know, Farai here who can uh, share some insights as to his journey, but also why throughout, and this is, I, I think, what's uh, quite paramount, throughout he has not, uh, uh, he has in fact uh, led with Ubuntu and recognized Ubuntu as a true viable uh, leadership tool. And uh, Sonia will talk about that a little bit later in the program, but we're going to prepare now to get into some breakout sessions um, so that we can have some, uh, you know, uh, you know, more intimate uh, conversations. Uh, before I do that, I wanted to just introduce our visual artist who has actually joined us here, Josh Chapata, based out of uh, Zimbabwe, I, I believe. And uh, as we are speaking and going through this conversation, uh, he's actually uh, making some art. Um, and uh, what an honor, right, to, to be, uh, you know, surrounded by others that can bring so much Ubuntu into the work that they do, uh, offering to support and to uh, bring more of the story because it is through how we tell the stories that uh, Ubuntu is actually spread around the world. Uh, thank you, Josh, uh, for your work. Um, we can actually now start preparing to get into the breakout rooms. And uh, in the breakout rooms, we already know from all of the conversations we've had in the past year what Ubuntu is. Um, we are now starting to explore how are we actually uh, bringing Ubuntu into our lives, into our everyday lives, and working uh, with Ubuntu. For the most part, we really need to focus on how are we actually being able to, uh, and why we feel that Ubuntu is important. I think that's uh, the key point. Uh, if you can uh, just uh, place everyone in the uh, uh, breakout room sessions, please. It's like a photo oh, magazine of the twenty picking. Oh. Ah, mm. but we never have to go either. We never have to show. So we must send the souls again, the boy. Must send the souls again. Oh. Go check, go check. But there is no planet for for magazine. No, but I don't know where. Hmm. How many lectures? Yeah, better. As much as the money can take. Oh. From who? How, how, how many do you need? I mean, well, it's it's a, it's a, yeah, I know Paul Spear, MDF, Ariston. Because I don't know what I did. That's the Rascal Farm match. Papa Farm Pemphis. So I then couldn't put it. So, Victor, please mute yourself.
Welcome back, welcome back to the main room. Uh, so really as an invitation, uh, could you share um, on the chat there, if you can just type out in the chat, uh, you know, any summary you may have from what you discussed in your breakout rooms. Um, you know, if you have any questions for our speakers, also please put them in the chat. Um, you know, Sonia is going to help me out here and uh, look to some of those questions and insights uh, as we uh, continue the conversation. We have just about 15 minutes before we end our session today, uh, and I have to tell you that uh, in the session where I was, uh, it really became alive uh, to recognize that we had, uh, you know, uh, uh, one of our friends who was just really starting to learn what Ubuntu is, and uh, I referred a lot to what Farai had been talking about to say, you don't actually show up by preparing, in who you are, you define Ubuntu, uh, and so uh, what uh, wonderful time to be alive, uh, recognizing that we're going to walk away from these conversations, having an encounter, a human encounter, albeit, you know, over the, um, you know, uh, technology here on, on Zoom, but also feeling really connected to someone you may not have known before, feeling really connected to this concept and recognizing you already are Ubuntu. Uh, it's just more about revealing it more and intentionally sharing it uh, from that place every day. Um, please do share in the chat uh, anything that you, uh, was discussed that was compelling, any questions you may have uh, as we move our program forward. I'm feeling very energetic and very alive live because we had a pretty uh, remarkable session in our room and I'm hoping it was the same uh, as well for you. Um, one of the things that I do also want to invite because we know that we have uh, some uh, you know young professionals uh, here today with us and others uh, you know watching this uh, on Facebook and on LinkedIn please do send any questions that you may have because one of the key items is about how do you bring Ubuntu with you throughout your journey into those leadership roles uh, and we have uh, Farai and David here who can uh, share uh, going forward uh, Sonia may I invite you to um, you know, offer some insights for what we have been discussing so far. One of the things that uh, you may not know about Sonia is that she actually works with leaders, right? So uh, people that are in politics, people in companies, in the C-suite, you know, people in our uh, healthcare, all over really, uh, uh, you know, the, the industries uh, and works with them and coaches on leadership. And what an honor that she, in of all of the other aspects that she pulls in, one of the tools that she really brings in there is, uh, is Ubuntu. Uh, so Sonia, uh, you have the floor. Thank you, Molly. Um, I'm really happy that we are now in a position that we want to support and create more leaders around us, because we know that uh, we must stop waiting for some hero to come to help us or to solve all the problems we face but that we are called to action and create the future we want to have. So uh, yes, leadership and Ubuntu in leadership, it means also this, that each of us is a leader because we lead our own lives, we lead our teams, we lead our organizations and Ubuntu helps us to lead us, our teams, our organizations, so that we are focusing on the human needs. And also, uh, I would like to refer what was said before. Dr. David uh, Kaulem said that economics may divide us. Yes, because it is not focused on human needs. If we remember what economics is about, that it, it uh, 
is to provide for your family and for your home, that this is the basic spirit of economics, then also economics would connect us as Ubuntu connects us. And in our room, I can um, say that we were really uh, focusing on all the aspects of Ubuntu, on the empathy, on the uh, respect, on being able also to forgive, on being able to trust. And these are also other aspects of Ubuntu that are helping us to be the leader we wish to have. This is something for each of us. Become a leader you want to have. And if we would all be the leaders that we wish to have, then I believe that our teams will flourish and not just teams, also our organizations, our countries, and the humanity will flourish. And Ubuntu can support us in this. Thank you, Sonia. It's, uh, so very much indeed, um, you know, very much about uh, Ubuntu being a tool that uh, is very viable in the world. And, uh, you know, all of us recognizing uh, who we are as leaders. I'm seeing there is a comment uh, here uh, from uh, Katie, they're in room seven, and they're really discussing a lot more about, uh, you know, uh, Ubuntu being fostered every day. Uh, I like how she says it's a, a muscle you can flex, um, you know, and that takes really an intention and being mindful, right? Recognizing that, yes, sometimes we may be challenged, uh, you know, personally, but being able to utilize that muscle to be able to say, you know, in my Ubuntu, how best can I actually uh, handle this, uh, you know, uh, scenario? Um, uh, so if you can use in the chat there, I don't know if you know how to uh, raise your hand. I'm just going to ask, I'm just going to take some pause real quick. Um, if you're currently uh, in an education program and uh, wanting to continue to grow as, uh, as a leader, please raise your hand in the, in the chat here. Another thing too that I would also like uh, as a poll is if you are currently already in your work and you are starting to see that there's going to be a shift in uh, the direction, you know, maybe moving to a different industry or taking on a different role, also raise your hand. Uh, using the chat here, very good. Um, if you are in a position where you are finding yourself, uh, you know, with uh, the uh, uh, opportunity to incorporate what you, with who you are, when you're actually working with the people that are leading you uh, in a place where you are actually wanting to um, be heard and be seen, raise your hand. Who wants to feel seen every day in their work? Raise your hand. If you are in a position where you are actually leading a team and you are constantly uh, reminding yourself, uh, how would I want to be treated? Is this from a place of empathy and love? Please raise your hand. If you are in a position where you feel that you have shown up today and you have learned something new and you have a new energy that has been uplifted, uh, please raise your hand. What I love about this is that we are seeing more and more hands going up because this is our call to action, right? We have spent the last uh, you know, 90 minutes having a conversation uh, that is so key to connecting each and every one of us. But we also know that when we are walking away from this conversation, we are now interacting with the rest of the world. We may all be influencing a thousand people, you know, 10,000 people uh, for all we know, starting right from this conversation where we are being reminded that in each of us, we are leaders. So if you are starting from uh, uh, the beginning where you are still at the earlier stage of your career, what a wonderful uh, inspiration, right? Recognizing that who you are is very much integral to who you will be as a leader. You cannot leave your Ubuntu outside the door when you walk into that board meeting. 
What we are wanting to uh, get uh, encouraged about here, and I see another comment uh, from room two, Luindi Mudenda, you shared uh, some, your, your comment here. We discussed how Ubuntu is about empathy, forgiveness, respecting, seeing each other, and um, this being fostered in everything that we do. How can we be leaders if we are actually leaving this outside the door? I think a key item that Farai brought to the table was, I see you. That is a greeting that my friends from South Africa use, Saubona. Being able to recognize that we are, it's an invitation to see one another, right? And it's not so much about just the seeing with our eyes, right? I can still see with my ears, right? Being able to tune into what is being shared. I can also see with my heart. And I think that's the, really the most important bit, where we are being able to see each other in a way that actually shapes how we work. So many of us have actually moved, you know, our mountains throughout this year as we've been meeting together. And what a, uh, you know, a generosity of movement that we can make and carve out 90 minutes out of our, you know, our day to sit down and have a conversation with others that are not only like-minded, but like-hearted and recognizing that the more that we come into this space to feel inspired, the more we can walk into the world and really make a difference. I see Farai is adding another you know, key point here. We recruit, three, uh, uh, we recruit on three traits. Uh, this is from the current company where he's leading. Um, you know, humility, uh, hungry, smart, I guess that's the in intelligence. Uh, so Ubuntu is very much uh, a, a part of this, right? Recognizing that we cannot uh, be in a company where we are, you know, evaluating core values and not recognizing that it's also about how people feel, uh, as Sonia had, uh, had talked about. Uh, when it comes to education, and thank you, Dr. David, for all the work that you have done, recognizing you needed to go back into education, because this is where we can actually cultivate the very spirit that, you know, the folks in my room were talking a little bit more about this. If you are coming from a different place and you are tasked to lead, let's say, uh, a group, how do you actually connect uh, with, with others to build that trust? A lot of that comes back with curiosity, asking the right questions, having the humility to recognize that leadership is not so much about, you know, uh, managing people, but truly leadership is a lot more about the honor of being able to serve others. Um, I think we are getting close to the end of our program here. Uh, I'm wondering whether I can open up the room uh, if anyone uh, wants to share anything that is burning. Uh, this may be uh, your, your opportunity. Um, uh, and for I, maybe I can put you on the spot a little bit as well. Uh, I am very keyed into, you know, our young professionals. You know, I do a lot of mentoring as well with that. Is there any uh, parting words that you can share when it comes to young professionals? Everyone who is actually wanting to aspire, aspire one day to be in a leadership position, what might you be able to uh, impart to them? Uh, thank you very much for putting me on the spot. But I, I'll say it in a game, very, very simple words. Uh, love your neighbor as you love yourself. And when you get into any position where you have to work with people, which in most situations, that's every job that you have, is to always remember that you have to respect each and every person that you work with. And the more you can show that respect, the more you can carry that through your everyday life, you are probably where you are for, at that particular time because you've educated yourself on a particular um, line of education and you're an expert at what you do, but you cannot carry that expertise without having to remember that people will be the ones who carry you through your growth. So always respect people. Don't just think that because I'm educated and all this will carry you through. 
Thank you, Farai. Uh, great uh, lasting words there. Um, and if you don't mind, uh, you know, uh, if you have not connected with any of our speakers from today, Farai and uh, David, uh, feel free to reach out, reach uh, out to us, and we can actually give you, uh, you know, some information as to how to be in touch with them if you have any questions. Sonia, you've been an excellent co-host. This has really been great. Uh, Chenesa and Violeta, what can I say? Uh, you know, uh, women that are really empowered and empowering others. Uh, uh, and empowered because you empower others in a way that is, uh, you know, so remarkable. I thank each and every one of you. I recognize we are leaving each other here, but I do believe that we are going to still be connected in spirit because of all of the good works we're going to do in the world, standing up for what is good in the world and continuing to be in touch with each other because this is a movement. The next event coming up will be the final event uh, for the year, which will be uh, our celebration of Year of Ubuntu in December and we'll be sending out that information as well uh, on email as well as on the social media platforms there. What a remarkable community and movement this is. Can you all get off mute and let's just kind of give a ululation and celebration as we end. Just get off mute please as an invitation. Oh my God. Thank well, you. Okay. Yes. Yeah, Thank you. Yes. I just want to Very good. Enjoy it very much. Yes. Fantastic. Good. Thank you all very much. Okay. Bye. 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 Thank you. 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 That's wonderful. Chene, did you want to say something at the end? Yes, I wanted to hear a, a bit about what Josh has put together. Oh, what very good. Yeah. Josh, if you're still on, maybe you can uh, just come on the screen there and share your screen, maybe even. Yes, please. Yes, please. Um, okay. um, right. Hopefully, you guys can hear me. Yes, we can. Okay, that's fine. Awesome. Basically, the, um, the piece that we're doing is done now. And yeah, let me bring it closer. So that's what we have. So this right here, where we've got the bold shapes that are there, the color shapes that are there, is just a representation of different individuals. It's beautiful. Yes. That's because as individuals, we are all created differently. We all have different linings and wiring. But let me first, <coughs> sorry. Bless you. Sorry. That's okay. No problem. Let me fascinate you now with how the power of bringing each and every different individual has a better picture in one story. The moment that we decide to power up as individuals in the sense of Ubuntu, we've got a united front that is more beautiful than us as individuals. And that's what I wanted to talk about as um, celebrating the year of the Ubuntu, that it, it is not just about self. It is about a united front. It is about where we need to go as, an, as, as, indiv as individuals, but in a united way, as a team, as a collective, as a group, as a people, not as individuals. We have a beautiful picture as individuals but we have an even more detailed story that we can tell as a united people. That's what we draw today. And I'm thinking, let's title this one, Ubuntu. There we go. Very, very good. We had exactly the same question in our group that how do all the trailblazers who want to lead, who want to drive as individuals, how do you connect them to be part of a team? And I think that that story, that picture is just like the best way to be able to explain that. Wow. And you can see in the comments here, Josh as well. Thank you. And thank you, Chene, for reminding me about Joshua's working so brilliantly there. You started with a you know, blank page, and uh, now we have uh, a story of Ubuntu uh, through arts. Um, again, and we, we had someone who was, you know, in fashion here with someone who is in education, someone who is in architecture, uh, you know, really, when you start to think about we all bring something to the table, uh, that is so exciting. And I love that we are four minutes over our meeting. 
and people are still here because why not, Josh? This is amazing. Bravo. Bravo. Mm. Ah, I don't want to leave anybody. <laughs> Next time we'll have music and we'll have more art. And uh, But thank you so much for this uh, really vibrant conversation. If anyone wants to stay on just a few more minutes, uh, just to share a little bit of what was compelling, uh, please get off mute and share what you can. Uh, but at this point, uh, you know, our event is uh, done for the day. Uh, Molly, yes. while people are leaving, I just wanted to share uh, my inspiration for the day. I'm uh -huh. an early childhood teacher. And I know when we think of leaders, we're thinking of ourselves, right? But then we have leaders of tomorrow. And as an early childhood teacher, when you walk into my classroom, the first thing you see is be kind, be respectful, be responsible. And I think all those are not about yourself. I'm teaching these little children that they need to be kind to others. They need to be respectful of others and be responsible of others as well around you. So to me, with the leadership in place now, I will actually be installing it in them to make sure that they're not only thinking about the now and my classroom, but also as they go out in the world as lifelong learners. Wow. So for today. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. What, you know, what, what a leader, right? Uh, here we have you know, an educator, who is, uh, you know, working with the most important, you know, generation, right? The ones that are going to be uh, coming after us. And, uh, you know, Ubuntu all the way. Thank you, Lynn. Anybody else? Something burning, something uh, interesting to share? I, I am, I am Miss, I'm Sakala Stanley from Zambia, actually. I'm a teacher. I'm into teaching uh, African languages and English in secondary schools. But what I've been doing to, to make a reality in Ubuntu on my personal level, the coaching, mentoring young, young, do some entrepreneurial activities, mentoring them how to become strong uh, uh, leaders in their communities. As I'm talking now, one of the uh, young leaders, young learners, or school leavers is in Osaka, capital city, to attend a seminar on the Africa Must Think. Uh, the, 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 the program came in because of an inspiration that you have been in, uh, imparting into this young uh, 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 citizen, such that he will be is able now to coach others in Zambia on how to do business. I feel with the, uh, with the coming up of this particular program, Obviously, we shall team up and how and do best on how we can empower and indeed inspire young learners to become very responsible citizens and indeed take up leadership roles and indeed transform our continent. Thank you. Wow, bravo. Thank you, Stanley. That is, thank you for your work, everything you're doing every single day. Uh, to incorporate this and thank you for attending this session because now we're just recognizing that you know uh, the education path uh, is very different for many but we have so many amazing people that are out here you know not leaving anyone behind uh, in incorporating these principles and tools that really can uh, shape the, the future thank you for your work thank you did we have anybody else All right. This is good. <laughs> and uh, so we will uh, hopefully, uh, Josh, you can share, you know, that uh, uh, picture maybe on social media or somewhere so we can, uh, you know, talk, uh, continue to talk about that. But it looks like we are, we are winding down and, uh, you know, I hope that you're uh, connected and exchanged uh, communication information so that our movement can continue being more about the work we are doing every day outside of this. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you. And thank I don't know you. if we have got it. Madam, I don't know if we have got a, a deliberately uh, policy where uh, young youths can be uh, meet on, on a platform where they will be discussing, sharing ideas on how to, to do the best in their uh, countries, in their communities. If uh, we may have that, such a, an opportunity, that would be great. 
because there will be a change uh, exchange of ideas between youth in Zambia, in, in, in Zimbabwe, in Malawi, whatever. Maybe we we'll create okay. even a, a, a team where we source some funds somewhere, where we empower these youths, especially those who are in rural areas, who are more, more uh, uh, well, are less privileged than those that in, in urban areas, because the information does not reach to them as early as it has been in those that are in urban areas. At the end of it all, they will they remain behind, they will become unprogressive in life. Hence, we hear, oh, somebody has been killed, has killed himself, or oh, a girl has been impregnated, or early marriages, all those things. So it's a sad story, Mama. So with the coming of this and the interaction that we are doing here, it's really uh, helpful for us to take the most in information uh, to the closer to the uh, direct recipients, such that they will become alert, informed the uh, people in, in whatever they want to do in life. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Absolutely. And I've taken uh, your name here. We have your information as well. So we'll definitely be um, in, in touch to uh, uh, talk some more. One of the things I think that you said that was important there is, is there a forum for young people to have a conversation such as this? So certainly we invite, you know, everyone, this is really a, a, a global forum, uh, but it might be interesting to explore what, it, uh, what uh, we could do perhaps sometime next year uh, for such a forum. Um, there is certainly, you know, uh, these that certainly things that are good for us to explore. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good, good, good. Um, and if we don't have any more questions, perhaps uh, we are done for the day. Yes, we are. <laughs> now, if we had music, we just sit around and hang out with each other, right? In, in uh, with music. I promise next time I'll have the music uh, thing all sorted out. Uh, but thank you so much uh, for your time, and uh, we will talk again in December when we have our celebration uh, uh, for this uh, year of Ubuntu and uh, you know closing things down. Appreciate it. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Molly, to host us yes, so heartfully. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Molly. Thank you, Molly. Bye. 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 Thank you, Katie. Bye. Thanks, Marilyn. All right. Uh, we're just starting to drop off here. Um,